coverage of domestic violence cases. And in sports, Good Shepherd and St. Albans rule the Andrea Blackett zone at Knapsack. Credible. Balanced. Committed. This is the CBC Evening News. Good evening, I'm Lisa Broom. This is the CBC Evening News. Local authorities are concerned that some older people don't know their HIV and AIDS status or even know how to protect themselves from the disease. Social Care Minister Steve Blackett has raised the issue. He says government is aware of the need to include the elderly in the fight against HIV and AIDS as it can have an impact on that population. Mr. Blackett says there are still some older adults who are sexually active but shy away from getting tested. One is further reminded that in some cases, some older adults may not even know that they are HIV positive. Furthermore, many of them do not know how to protect themselves or their sexual partners from HIV transmission. Ladies and gentlemen, research has also shown that in some cases, older persons have only recently learned of their HIV status despite the fact that they would have been living with HIV for a number of years. Thus, unfortunately, on account of not being cognizant of their HIV status, some of them would continue to be sexually active and therefore proceed to compromise the health of others. The minister's comments come as his ministry and key partners move to bring about a change in the number of older Barbadians being di diagnosed with HIV. They will do so through a series of posters and CD geared towards the elderly. These were launched this morning at the Amun Bay Caterers in Hastings. The messages on the posters include, We still have sex, use a condom, and HIV doesn't care. Copies of the CD were also presented to a number of officials and organizations, including the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation. Director of the National Assistance Board, Sharon Wilson, says older people should not be denied access to information on HIV and AIDS. It is imperative that older persons gain greater and critical insight and are sensitized to the following important areas. Number one, adhering to universal precautions. Number two, knowing the roots of HIV transmission. Number three, the necessity of being tested. And number four, prevention. And in related news, there's concern that people may have become complacent about HIV and AIDS. It comes from Chief Justice Sir Marston Gibson, who observes that it does not now get the same amount of attention as it did in the past. And he's worried this could lead to people thinking that Barbados has beaten the illness. Well, Sir Marston was speaking at a balloon release function, one of several activities put on each year by the Supreme Court's Love Safely Committee. Coordinator of that committee, Tracy Sargent, agrees with Sir Marston and says that's why the activities, including talks on sexuality and displays for the public, are critically important. All and the activities uh, well, are supposed to motivate the staff and actually bring them together, even if it's this one occasion, bring them together, educating them about what is really happening in our society. Because a lot of emphasis recently has been placed on cancer, other non-communicable diseases, but really and truly HIV and AIDS plays a major role in what is going on. And we need to keep abreast of the information that is out there because there's an Asian society, the society is evolving, and we need to be aware of what is really going on. A wellness policy is being developed for Barbados. Leading this initiative is the planning committee of the National Week of Excellence. Deputy Chairman Orlando Gabby Scott says it will be one that is comprehensive and covers all aspects of health in the workplace. Mr. Scott says the policy will be drawn up at an upcoming program, part of the 2016 Week of Excellence. This approach seeks to reduce the impact of worksite illnesses and accidents and the resulting absences and presenteeism. In fact, this year, one of the prime listed outcomes of the seminar workshop on wellness and productivity, which will be held this coming Tuesday at Solidarity House, will be the writing of a national wellness policy for Barbados. The Week of Excellence runs from February 21st until the 27th. 
The focus this year will be placed on building young leaders. Chairman of the Coordinating Committee, John Pilgrim, during the launch says the theme, continuing the transition, growing and sustaining tomorrow's leaders, is a follow-on from last year. Last year's theme focused on looking at some of the attributes and building young leaders. And we thought that this year would provide us with another opportunity based on the success of last year to follow in this vein. The Week of Excellence program has over the past decade been lauded from several quarters as a program which has raised issues of national significance and provided a platform to unpack those which are emerging. And this year again is no different. Mr. Pilgrim expects young leaders to be enriched with knowledge and will benefit from interaction with current leaders and professionals. We'll take a break here, but we have more news afterward. You're looking good. I love your hair, your skin, so good looking. Healthy, it must be the... about life is learning not to give up, falling and standing up again with you by their side. And for the toughest stains, you can always rely on Breeze laundry detergent. Breeze, with the extra power of pre-treaters, removes the toughest stains even in a quick wash. Keep on playing. Breeze, unbeatable Keep on, on the toughest stains. Distributed by Massey Distribution. So here is a case of an indigenous uh, plant from the Caribbean being taken and brought over to other parts of the tropical world. So if you do see a sandbox tree, please take the time to point it out to your children. And if they've never seen one, come down here to Cane Field in St. Thomas and you're gonna see a number of these very unique and very majestic sandbox trees here. Trees of the silent sentinels Sunday at 7.30 p.m., repeated on Saturday at 6 p.m. Trees of the Silent Sentinels. A lot of people think that fast books are cool, and the girls show that the guys who write them, but like so many things about life, you've got to be careful. Having sex without a condom is like wearing a bike without a helmet. It's just plain dumb. It's okay to have fun as long as you're smart about it. My name is Daniel the Lion Fortress, and I'm different, and I'm making a difference. Live up, love, protect, respect. Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism and International Transport, Senator Irene Sandiford Garner, would like to see a ban on media coverage of domestic violence cases. She explained why during debate in the Senate on the Domestic Violence Protection Orders Amendment Bill. Especially when you think of the fact that many of these families and family units have children who then face more abuse and more vilification when they go to school or walk the streets. As a country, we are signatories to conventions related to the elimination and prevention of violence against women like Belen de Porta, CEDA, the Belen de Porta, Belen de Porta, CEDA, and other conventions. So this legislation really and truly goes a long way in validating our international profile. And every Barbadian should acquaint themselves with it. Senator Sandiford Garner also sees a need for reliable statistics on the abuse of men and boys. She's telling men there's no shame in admitting to being abused. And in his contribution to the debate, Government Senator Alwyn Adams says police officers should be given more training given their increased power under the bill. Particularly those officers that have to deal with I think that um, that is something ought to be looked into because legislation alone will not actually effectively deal with domestic violence. So there are several other areas, relevant areas, that perhaps will need to be addressed either simultaneously or so we believe that that is something that we ought to look at. 
CEO of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association is confident the hotel projects coming on stream will give the island enough rooms to meet the expected increase in visitors. Sue Springer tells CBC News the room stock on the island is returning to normal. So some of the rooms that are coming back on stream, e.g. Sam Rod's Castle, e.g. Sandy Beach, which is going to be Sands, um, the expansion of Casarina, of course, is additional rooms, and the Hyatt, um, which you were referring to, will be additional rooms. This will then bring us up to some of the capacity we had maybe 10 years ago. So yes, this is exciting. And then from then on, once we reach that capacity, we will then be growing more. And that is when um, Beaches comes into the fray of an additional 400 rooms in the north. But you have to remember there were about 300 rooms there before. And there's only about 190 of those operational as we speak. So what has happened is a lot of our product has been laying waste, as you know, around the island. So this now means that where we did have product, that is now coming back. Ms. Springer says it's also good news for the labor market. That means immediately we bring some people back into working in construction and in the long term, obviously, people in the industry itself. So it's a great opportunity for young people that have recently qualified. They can get in at ground level and then make a mark for themselves and progress into management. And as I say, with an international branding, it means that they've got the opportunity. Barbados appears to be beating out other destinations in the region as a top choice for U.S. and U.K. visitors. According to statistics from the Caribbean Tourism Organization, Barbados recorded the highest growth rate in arrivals out of the United States last year, with numbers up by 28% when compared to 2014. And for visitors from the U.K., the island registered the second highest rate of growth, an increase of 14% in 2015. Only Cuba saw more growth out of that market. CTO General Secretary Hugh Riley says it's part of a record performance for the region this year, with figures showing that the Caribbean as a tourist destination outperformed all other regions across the world. He revealed that arrivals and spend reached an all-time high, with the tourism sector contributing $30 billion to regional economies. For the first time ever, the pace of growth of Caribbean tourism outperformed every major tourism region in the world. Our region has set new arrival and spend records in 2015, far surpassing expectations. Caribbean tourism grew by an estimated 7% to 28.7 million visits, much higher than the projected 4 to 5%. This performance was above the global rate of growth, which the UN agency, the World Tourism Organization, quotes at 4.4%. In that period, visitors spent over a billion dollars more than they did in 2014. A desire by a Barbadian living overseas to give back to her country of birth has led to a donation to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. The gift comes from Marva Latimore, who now lives in the United States. Ms. Latimore's friend, Yvette Evelyn, presented on her behalf a check and computer to head of the pediatrics department, Dr. Clyde Kay. She has a grandson who um, is a patient at the hospital, and that inspired Mrs. Um, Latimore to uh, assist the hospital by way of donating a check and a computer for use in the pediatric um, department. So we're always grateful when people assist in our work here at the um, hospital because the extent of the work is not something that can be done um, alone. Um, it involves a community and we're always very happy when people think of us and look to give back. And Ms. Evelyn says it's the second time the philanthropist has donated to the hospital. When she was working at Transit, she always used to say she wants to make a contribution to Barbados in some way. Now she retired, but she took on part-time work in order to get money to be able to help and she's very happy to make the donation and I'm proud to represent her here this morning, Antonia and I. Well, Barbadians are being warned that the upcoming wet season could have an effect mirroring the catastrophe caused by Tropical Storm Erica in Dominica. That's the worst case scenario according to climate experts speaking to regional journalists during a press conference at the Savannah Hotel. They say the impending weather change from severe dryness to increased rainfall could potentially cause major flooding. 
One of the experts is agrometeorologist and chief of applied meteorology and hydrology at the Caribbean Institute for Meteorology and Climatology, Adrian Trotman. He advises Barbadians to stay tuned to CIMH's report to monitor the situation as the wet season approaches in May. It all depends on how rapidly these rains come back. Yeah. If it's slow and progressive, yes, you might get flooding. But if it, the same thing happened as occurred in 2010, when there was no period that of, of no, 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 no level ground, it went from extremely dry into extremely wet in the space of one month. Yeah. Because of that, an intense rain right after the drought, Three persons in Dominica died from a landslide. Climatologist at the Institute, Dr. Cedric Van Merbeek, says they will continue to monitor weather patterns and update the public, paying special attention to how excessive initial rainfall will be. What we are hoping for, for the entire region, including Barbados, is that the rain would come back progressively. Why progressively? Because first you need to allow the soils to be able to uh, suck in the moisture and then progressively refill our water reservoirs in Barbados on groundwater. So that takes a long time to recharge. What we are warning against is the possibility, especially in the event of a La Nina, that the water will come back, that the rain will come back too fast. And that is when we get into the problem of the hazard of flooding. Let's all to come a look at some of the stories making headlines across the region. Everybody smile! Wendy Boys, known as Celebrity Barbados. There are only 287 days.